More on OPEC, I spoke with Cornelia Meyer. She's an independent energy expert. I started by asking her how OPEC came to its decision today and what it means for the rest of the world. Well, at this point, I think it worked for OPEC not to do anything because essentially what happened is you had all the Gulf um, country producers saying we don't want to, uh, to change because we are basically fine. Our production costs are not too high. You had three countries um, who were interested in changing, which were the two Latin American countries led by Venezuela and um, Iran. Um, and, but they didn't have enough clout really to, to change the position. OPEC provides 35% roughly of the world's oil. How has that changed in recent years? And did we see perhaps a weakening effect that OPEC has uh, in the meeting today? Well, um, it has changed because there's been a lot of shale oil production. It's been ramping up incredibly quickly. But you know what can ramp up quickly can also go down quickly because the shale oil producers are really dependent on cash flow and they need a reasonably high price. So below $70, it gets very, very difficult. And because when they invest, it's immediately reflected in production. When they don't invest, it will also be immediately reflected in production. Let's talk a bit about that. The U.S., through its shale production, has been able to put about a million barrels of oil on the market per day. As you said, they need to make about $70 uh, per barrel to be profitable. Right now, a lot of the experts are saying that perhaps before Christmas, we could see the price of oil go down to $60 a barrel. That would be close to a 45% drop in the past five months. What would that do to the shale production here in the U.S.? And secondly, do you think this is one of the goals of OPEC nations and those sympathetic uh, with their operating uh, uh, procedures. Well, what it will it less? And because the production profiles of these wells are so short-lived, you know, 18 months and then to over and drill a new hole. Um, that means that if they don't invest now in 10 to 18 months, there will be no production coming from the wells they didn't drill. And that is what it will mean. So it would mean a market fall in the in shale oil production in the U.S. Um, I don't think it's the explicit goal of, of OPEC. The goal of OPEC was, look, let's go as we are. That's very good for consuming countries, so their consumption will coming up. And with producing, with the producers, probably they'll invest less, so over time there will be less production, so demand will again meet um, supply, and we will go up again in price. The 12 OPEC nations and those uh, who <coughs> basically follow Russia uh, they are not making nearly as much money as they projected. Russia basically says it's going to have to go in and take a look at its budget because they planned on at least $100 per barrel. What is this going to do and how, how strong was the pressure from uh, Russia, Venezuela, and um, I I Iran, three countries that, don't, that aren't doing nearly as well as the Middle Eastern uh, OPEC nations? <laughs> Well, if the pressure from Russia had been so high, they would have agreed with OPEC to reduce production, which they clearly haven't done. And Russia also does have $450 billion of foreign currency reserves and $80 billion of a sort of a, a slush fund for, for, to, to balance the budget. So they can deal with these prices for another year or two. Um, Venezuela will be very unhappy. Venezuela and Iran, they're countries that give out a, a lot of subsidies and therefore they need to balance the budget, they need a high oil price, so for them it's hard. Iran, because they just had the um, nuclear um, power mm -hmm. debate, you know, in the five plus one debate here in Vienna, and the real objective for Iran at this point is to get off the, um, the, off the restricted lists to partially or wholly lift sanctions. That is their obje objective. So at a dollar more and on oil price or less in oil price means much, much less to them than getting the sanctions lifted. So they want to be seen as being good global citizens. One thing I haven't heard a great deal about, the, the fighting that is going on in some regions, Libya, Syria, uh, in Iraq, what is that doing to the price of oil and is this going to have any effect? In the long run, it will, because, you know, nobody at this point will invest in Iraq. It's just simply too dangerous. Syria, it's just, nothing happens. Libya, it's, it's amazing that they can keep the production at the levels that they have, mm -hmm. but it's not at the levels that they should be. So, yes, there has been production getting out. So, in the long run, if other production gets out, that means less production. So, in the long run, that means, uh, that means um, an upper pressure on oil prices. 
Last question, just give me your prediction for the future. And I still want to go back to the fact that OPEC, in years past, I think everybody believes that they would have limited the production. They're not doing it now. What has changed, and do these not, OPEC nations have not, to diversify their economies? Um, you know, some of them do need to diversify their economies. They're working on it, but not necessarily. You know, in 1999, they flooded the market. Um, so there have been there have been times where OPEC just said, "Okay, look, it's in our interest to keep the oil price low because some other marginal producers will be squeezed out." So not necessarily, but you know, if the oil price goes down too low and the pain gets too big for too many countries, they will have an extraordinary meeting, let's say in March or or, or February.